Hello, what's up guys? Welcome to the 8th episode of Uncovered. For all you people who tune in for every episode, y'all fucking rock. <laughs> you, you've listened to me for, I don't even know, what is that, like four and a half hours of combined all the 8 episodes. Uh, actually no, it's a little bit more than that, but hey. You guys rock. I really want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, This episode, if you didn't catch my previous episode, um, it was entitled Naked Truths. And it dealt with questionnaires from different people. So I got a lot of them. And I wasn't able to answer everyone's because of so many. But I'm going to be um, answering some more bit by bit. Uh, towards the end of this episode so make sure you stay tuned so um, if you ask me questions I'll be answering but um, this particular episode is about games and cinema (laughs) Um, two of my favorite things I'm I'm not so much like a like huge huge gamer but um, I have quite the repertoire um, when it comes to systems and things of that nature. So um, I'm going to show you guys what I own as far as video games go and then talk about eh, like some of my favorite movies, which I'm like super, super hardcore movie person. (laughs) For anyone who knows me, Everyone knows movies are my life. Like I just, I spit out actors, directors, producers. Like the the year that the movie came out. Like I even know some like crew members and stuff. That's just how fucking insane. I just love movies. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys my uh, collection here, and hopefully you'll like it. <laughs> so we are going to start from right to left. That's what we're gonna do. Over here, at my bottom, (laughs) no pun intended, I have my PS4. Sleek, sexy, awesome PS4. Just sits there, right? I don't really use it as much, but I love it. Blu-ray player, everything. Over here, over here is its predecessor, the PS3. Now, I didn't actually buy this. Funny story, one day I was going out to the, um, throw my trash away and everything, and it was like five seconds before it started raining. So I went out and uh, was throwing my stuff in the, the compactor, and I noticed something shiny in my peripheral. So I said, let me go check this out. Come to find out, it's a fully functional PS3. Like, I mean, mint condition, you know, um... And I, I thought that, you know, possibly the ports were torn apart or something and maybe it didn't work or whatever. But got home, hooked it up, works perfectly fine. So, I mean, it just sits there, you know, right next to the PS4, which is awesome. Black, 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 black. Up next is my Xbox One. Now, I don't really play this that much come to think of it i really don't play any of them that much because i work too damn much but xbox one this is the call of duty i think one if i'm not mistaken yeah call of duty and i absolutely hate call of duty i don't even know why I even have this one. I think it's just pretty cool because it has my initials on here, so it looks like I got it in gray. I don't know what the fuck A and W is for it, but yeah, I thought it was cool. So I said, oh look, my initials, I'm gonna grab it. Um so on here I have Mortal Kombat X for my PS4, but I don't really play it since the only person I used to really play with it was my brother. And you guys know about that. So yeah. Um then on the Xbox One I have the Grand Theft Auto 5, completely, completely ghetto game, but um, <laughs> I play it with my friend Brandon from Atlanta. We link up on here and go do heists and kill people and collect money and go buy whores and 
you know, all that good stuff. Whatever you do on these games. I never really played the story loads for them at all. Now, I'm taking you guys back. We're not future. We're not talking about all of that. We're going back to Sega. Fucking Sega. Yes. I have a Sega Genesis. <laughs> and it sits on top up here where everyone can see it because it's awesome. And these are only but a few of my games. It's Sonic, Power Rangers, uh, Ren and Stimpy. I also have Lion King. Um, like, I don't know, I have like eight or nine games on there. I don't even know the rest of them are. I think they're still in my car. So I'm gonna have to get them out soon. Now, for the thing that I use the most, it is my very own gaming PC. Yes, check it out, check it out. This thing is a beast. I actually built this from scratch. All the components, all of the parts, everything. And it only took me about three and a half hours, which I think is pretty damn good. Now, this thing is fucking massive. It's huge, it's tall, and it's heavy. But I wanna show you guys this interior. For all my tech geeky people, I think you guys can appreciate this. Call it Demon. Check it out. Check it, check it, check it. Can't really beat it. All right? GTA, the GTX graphics card. Awesome. Fucking love it. I installed several new LED lights, as you see here. Intake, outtake. And it's, you can't even hear it. It's on. It's literally on right now. But you can't even hear it, right? You know why? Because I switched out the the metal screws for the silicones. They are so awesome. Can't hear anything, it doesn't bother you. And I got one on top. Check it out. Nice. Perfect. Tell me. But I'm going to soon upgrade everything. I'm gonna get a new graphics card. Um, I'm thinking about getting another motherboard. I'm not 100% sure, and I definitely, definitely have to upgrade my RAM because that's only 16, and I don't, I, I, I can't deal with it. I have to get more. But this baby is awesome. Fast processor, just every, I use it for everything. I literally, not only gaming, I get on and I use it to watch movies, um, I type up reports, uh, you know, everything. Like, it's, it's just perfect. It comes in handy. So if anyone is interested in building your own PC, just let me know. I'll be glad to help because it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and lastly with video games, if anyone has a gaming PC, you know that Steam is where it is. Steam has everything, all the games that you can want on the Xbox One, PS4, PS3, whatever. Steam has it all and usually their prices are much better. So I just want to show you guys like a little of my library and what I have in here. Battleborn, Blaze Blue, uh, Chrono Phantasma, Borderlands 1, 2, and then, well actually Borderlands 2. Shit, I, I don't even remember getting bored with the first one. Anyway, hmm. the Borderlands pre-sequel. Deus Ex Invisible War, which was on the original Xbox. Oh my God, fucking awesome game. Um, Doom, oh my God, I haven't played Doom in forever. Uh, don't worry about the Dying Light demo, I just tested it out. Favorite, 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 favorite game, as you can see, it's always on here. As you can see, I'm unlocking achievements and everything. Then we got Left 4 Dead, one and two. Awesome, best fucking zombie games in the world. So, yeah, guys, that's just a little bit of my cinema uh, as far as video games go. So, I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back, and I'll tell you guys about my movies.
Hey guys, it's me Jamie and I'm going to be wrapping up the last series of Too Busy. And I find it to be quite ironic that I'm going to be wrapping up the last series of Too Busy because um, I have my hand in just about everything. Yeah, everything on a, like, a local level here in Atlanta and a um, national level. Always in somebody's meeting, always doing facilitating somebody's program, always um, traveling, always doing something, always too busy. Um, but so today's topic is going to be, you're probably too busy because you're unorganized. And um, so that hit home for me. <laughs> that hit home for me um, as I was thinking about it when I first started organizing. I was always too busy, right? So I would, I felt that I can do this, I can do that because I had something else. I had another obligation. I had a conference call. I had to be here. I had to be there. I had to be everywhere, right? So simple solution to that: get a calendar. Not on, not only get a calendar, use it. I only use it. Use it correctly. So, like, so for me, um, I know on Wednesdays, Wednesdays is my busiest days, okay? So, I'm not going to schedule anything between the times of 6 to 8. I'm either at an empowerment session that I run for um, the Evolution Project, or I'm at uh, a meeting for the Gentleman's Foundation. And on those Wednesdays, being that, you know, they are at the same time. I alternate. One Wednesday I do empowerment. One Wednesday I go to um, my gentleman's foundation meeting. You know, um, and then I also know that on Thursdays, from the hours of six to eight, about the same time, um, I'm also doing you know another empowerment session, but for an older crowd. So I know that from you know on that day I'm not going to be doing anything, or from on that day from for that time I won't be doing anything. Um, I'm not going to be scheduling no conference calls. I'm not going to be doing nothing. I also know on Tuesdays, like so, what I'm getting at is just like scheduling appropriately. I I do think there is a such thing as being. Uh, you being too busy because you're unorganized because if you don't have organization in your life Of course, you're gonna be like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, I, I you're gonna be stretching yourself too thin I've done it. So I know I know I know But then the beauty of a calendar was opened up to me and I was like, oh, okay Let me check my calendar and it sounds cliche, but in all honesty, it helps you it helps other people and it becomes it helps you become more reliable and responsible so let's try to get away from this thing of being too busy because you're um, unorganized let's start being more organized don't be like Jamie when Jamie was two years ago Jamie because uh, I was even busier then than I am now the difference is I have a calendar and I use it now then I had a calendar. I didn't use it. I just went with the flow. Oh wait, we gotta be where? We gotta do what? I gotta wait. I gotta speak where? You know. So it's those kind of things that you know. Definitely, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Let's not be Jamie from two years ago. Okay. Let's be great organized. You know, upstanding citizens of the United States of America. Okay. Um, so that's all I wanted to share with you all today. Get get you a calendar, use it, use it correctly, schedule your time appropriately, and let's stop being too busy because we're unorganized, okay? All right. Thank y'all, and I'll talk to y'all later. All right, I'm back, guys. You enjoy the commercial? You always do. They're informative, so watch them. Uh, so, last portion, or the next portion of this today's episode is in regards to cinemas and movies. 
And like I stated earlier, movies are my life. I can talk about movies all day long with whomever. I don't care who it is. If it's like a two-year-old kid or a 90-year-old grandmother, I can talk movies. So I'm not going to go into all the details with movies because then I'll be here all day long. But I'm going to tell you guys of like my favorite three sets of um, collections. And of course, for anybody who watches my live videos or see me and stuff and everything, uh, everyone should know that I am a fanatic about Boris Karloff. Fucking love him. There's just so many words I can use to explain how elated I am when it comes to just anything Boris Karloff. <laughs> that sounds kind of creepy, stalkerish. I mean, he's been dead for years, so I mean, I'm not a stalker, but just fucking love him. He, as the original Frankenstein monster, was undoubtedly his best role. And he didn't even say much. That was the thing. For that time frame, in the early 30s and the early 40s, like people relied on body language and uh, just expression, and which derived from that expressionistic state. Um, for anybody who knows that I'm also an expressionistic fanatic as well, uh, even having The Scream in My Apartment by Edward Mooch. And his art gave way to a lot of the films from the early 19th century all the way up to the 50s, you know. So it's really, really fucking awesome to be a part of that. And I just had to get this legacy. I was like, I have to own it. I have to own it. Now, second one, which of course is still <laughs> Boris Karloff, Boris Karloff, as the original mummy, um, Imhotep or Ardith Bay. <laughs> Um, absolutely loved him in this role as well. I'm a big, 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 big Egyptian fan. Um, I studied the mytho mythology for years um, in high school and beginning of college. Um, I even can still read hieroglyphics a little bit. It's, you lose, it's like if you don't lose, you don't use it, you lose it type thing. Um, but for the most part, it's still kind of engraved in my mind. So everything Egyptian was is super super awesome to me so to have boris karloff play the mummy m hotel um was just like oh god yeah i just like i couldn't do it and they, these were right after um he finalized his role or his last role in um the last last um Frankenstein movie was House of Frankenstein, uh, 1944, um, and he played, he didn't play the monster, I think it was Lou Cheney Jr., no, Lou Cheney Jr. played the wolf man, who played the monster, I can't remember who played the monster, uh, but Lou Cheney Jr. played wolf man, and Boris Kala played, uh, a deranged scientist, who was trying to obtain the journal of um, Dr. Henry Frankenstein in order to recreate his uh, experiment. So it was awesome. And right after that, or right or during that time is when he switched over and started portraying um, Ardeth Bay in uh, The Mummy. So it's fucking awesome, right? I know. And then lastly that I was going to talk about is Puppet Master. There have been nine of these and you know from the early 80s all the way up to the 90s this was just like i don't know so it was creepy but it was cute i don't know the puppets never really scared me um but i absolutely love blade who's on the cover and tunnel head uh he he's a douche he's a fucking douche like if no if you guys have not seen this or any of these, you have to watch it. Too Long Secret, he learns how to animate uh, inanimate objects, giving them life from a secret derived from the Egyptians. So they kind of correlate to each other. So I thought that was fucking pretty cool. Um, 
these are perfect. You have to watch them. Uh, and let me know what you think, because they're great. I love them. Um, and then also, which I don't have right now, but check out Clive Barker's Hellraiser. There are a total of eight, I believe. Don't watch past, past four. Do not. I repeat. Do not watch past four. The, everything past four is fucking terrible. One, two, three, and four were the best. Best quotes in the world. Best makeup in the world. Um, everything looked so real, so dramatic. It was just like, oh my God. Like, I remember, and to this day, it's one of my favorite quotes. Pinhead says, in, in, in Movie 4 Bloodline, he says, Human acquiescence is easily obtained by terror as it is by temptation. And I was like, did he just do that? Did he just say that? Like, oh my God. I was just like, I love this dude. I just want to give him a hug. That's probably why people think I'm fucking weird because of the fact that I love Pinhead, which I think I'm going to play or I'm going to dress up as Pinhead this year for Halloween. Yeah, that's going to be so fucking fun. So yeah, man. That's like, you know, some of my movies, some of the shit that I'm into. Um, you guys probably think I'm weird or you probably thought I was weird. Now you think I'm weirder, weirder. Is that a word? More weird? Weirder. I don't think weirder is a word. So more weird. <laughs> but hey, whatever. We all have our strange things that we like. And I am just crazy about movies. All kind of movies. Um, so thanks for entertaining me for that second while I talk about it. Um, I have a little time left for questions. I think this is going to be quickly everyone's favorite part of my show from now on. <laughs> I, I actually like it too. Questions um, have been really, really good here lately and I've been really, really surprised with them and just the way people... Um, have been wording and asking and being polite about it. So really, really, really awesome. Um, I have time to do about five. So let me start. Let me just pick a random place from one of my Facebooks. Okay, here. Um, let's see. Where is, I can't find it. Okay, I'll start here. <laughs> okay, um, this question reads, or it starts, um, I've noticed that in a lot of your pictures, you wear the same two necklaces. What do they mean? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I get asked that a lot, actually, if you guys can see them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't taken them off for, well, in the last four and a half years, I've only taken them off twice. Um, and they are couple, couple necklaces, obviously. Um, basically are puzzle pieces, yin to your yang, or things of that nature. And they read, because um, it's so small, so hard to see here. Um, I would like to be waiting for you always. And I don't know, it's just, um, just something I have, something that eventually if I am to get into a relationship in the future or in the near future, um, this will be a symbology that represents that for me because of the fact that I don't take them off and I don't give them to anybody. Um, that person is probably going to mean a lot in order for me to get it or in order for me to give it to them. So yeah, that's a really, really good question. And that's what I have him. That's what they are. <laughs> um, next question. Uh, da, 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 da. What is your favorite tattoo? Good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Mm. 
if I had to say, if I had to pick any, I would pick my back tattoo. Um, I don't know if I can kind of show it maybe. I'm not sure, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> maybe you can see a little bit of it there. Um, but it is my favorite because of the fact that it is a yin and yang, um, which is derived from Chinese heritage, I suppose. Um, stating that we as humans, or all creatures on earth, have that good and evil aspect um, about them, which is totally, totally true. And um, I use that representation as two lions, I'm sorry, two tigers, one light, one dark. And underneath them is Zenaku, which is the Japanese equivalent um, of yin and yang. And everyone knows that Japanese is my second language, so of course I have to incorporate something by them. Can't leave them hanging, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's um, it, it it also was my. It took me the longest to get. It's like six and a half hours. Three of which I slept. The other two, three, I think I ate and like chilled and played video games on my phone. So yeah, it was really really cool. Uh, but yeah, I would have to say that one was my favorite, or is my favorite tattoo. <laughs> um, next question. <laughs> this is funny. I see in all your shirtless pictures you have a lot of tattoos. Do you also have as many piercings? Hmm. No. <laughs> um, I have 26 tattoos. And 13 piercings. But 14. No, 13. 13. Six in each ear and one nipple. I had both my nipples, but some stuff happened and yeah so i only have one i'm gonna get it back but yeah so um just pretty much kind of half of what i have as far as tattoos go <laughs> not as adventurous when it comes to piercings they're kind of uh, i don't know something about them uh but let me see i have time for one more question and i ended with this one what is the weirdest place you've ever had sex how freaky are you every Ever, ever record yourself having sex? Ever got hit in public by a guy? Eesh. Um, I am not that. When it comes to sex, I'm kind of inexperienced in a lot of area areas. Um, so I haven't had any sex in any weird places. Freaky, I would say probably eight out of ten, maybe. Um, yes, I have recorded myself having sex several times. And I've never gotten hit in public, ever, by anybody. <laughs> but that's on the to-do list, right? Yeah, everybody has to do that at least once. <laughs> oh, man. But good question. Good question. Absolutely love it. Um, I am going to take another second break really quickly here, and I'll be right back, guys. And welcome back guys back to the favorite portion of the show where I reveal the underwear that I'm wearing by none other than tasty treasures who I am becoming infatuated with because of their awesome awesome underwear that they have um, this particular pair is my very first of the kind I've never had any like this but just like every other pair of underwear I've gotten by them um, they're awesome. They're relaxing. They're uh, they feel great and everything. So yeah, let me show you what they look like. <laughs> yes. Now they look more so <laughs> like those jock scrap straps things that the that the the jocks wear. But and you know at first I was really really hesitant about it, and like even with this being open. They're still actually really comfy. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I can still kind of pretty much do what I want in them, just like I, how I love to do in all of my underwear. Um, and I love the fact that this is not cut here, or these do not come down as long. Please pardon my hairy ass legs. I have not had time to actually um, get rid of the hair. But yeah, 
it they're awesome right they look really really good mesh just like the um uh pink and pink and green ones that i had on on the other episode so i love that too it kind of gives you a little kind of gives your body some breathing space and things of that nature so awesome awesome you guys can win a free pair of these if you want all you have to do is the same thing that you've done in the last few episodes is send your name and your size to anthony at nypsnetwork.com as many times as you want there's no limit to how many you can do it increases your chances of winning so if you like these as much as i do make sure you guys tune in for that um and lastly i want to announce the winner um of a previous episode that i totally forgot congratulations to jelani brenton he uh won the green pair of underwear and then this week's uh, winner is none other than dominique grace so congrats to both of the guys and thank you so much for uh, entering for the contest and lastly before i get off of here um there's immediately following this episode of uncover is going to be an episode of eat by none other none other sorry got tongue tied uh then jay cross um crazy crazy regiment guy uh, who looks body is fucking fantastic uh giving out some special tips on eating healthy working out and making sure you make the most of your day with your proteins and your nutrients i know i'm gonna tune in you should totally tune in hey What's the worst that could happen? You can be more healthy. Awesome, right? So please make sure you guys tune in and also tune in for the third episode of uh, Unpredictable with Leslie on Tuesday at 10 p.m. And I'm out of here, guys. I'm about to go chill and relax. I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye.